Previously, Edward was chief executive of FTSE-listed company Christian Salverson, a large European logistics firm headquartered in the UK. Now, as co-chairman of Investors MENA, he helps small and medium-sized companies secure funding to help them grow and develop. Edward, welcome. Yeah, good evening. Also, also with us this evening, Eileen Wallace, managing partner of the Portsmouth Group. Eileen was educated in the United States before moving to Dubai more than a decade ago. In 2000, she was a founding partner of Wallace Marketing Consultants, which has grown into a successful company with offices across the region. Then in 2006, Eileen launched a second agency, the Portsmouth Group, repeating the success of Wallace by establishing Portsmouth as a successful regional communications firm. Eileen Wallace, thank you very much indeed for being with us. Us. Thank you. And also, finally, our judge this evening, Yusuf Tukan Tukan, the chief executive of Flip Media. Yusuf was raised here in the UAE and after college in the United States, returned to Dubai to join the emerging internet industry in the late 1990s. In 2008, he was appointed chief executive officer of Flip Media, the region's largest interactive advertising agency employing more than 100 people in seven offices around the world. Yusuf. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Richard. So with that, let us meet our first contestant this evening. She is Deviani Dial, the co-founder of She Moves Online. She Moves is a specialist clothing retailer and wholesaler. Specializes in what it calls movement wear, in particular dance and exercise clothing for women of all shapes and sizes. Now it imports mainly from the United States, selling through its own website and through fitness centers. A relatively new company, She Moves, hopes to grow revenue substantially in 2012. Deviani, a very good evening. Thank you very much for being with us. Good evening. Okay, let's get straight on to our questions this evening. A couple of hours ago, Deviani was given the first task, and this was it. Carry out a SWOT analysis of your own company, looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Edward, I believe you have the first question. Yeah, I always believe that these exercises are a relativity thing. You're not good or bad. You're only better or worse than the competitors. So from that viewpoint, have you aligned the, the, the strengths of your business on that basis? Well, I think there's two perspectives to consider at the moment because on the one hand, everybody says our competitors are the industry of sportswear and there's tons of sporting clothes around. But at the same time, I feel like I make a distinction between sportswear and active wear. So... What I have to say about that is locally, there is no other distributor or retailer for activewear in this region. And uh, I actually brought a sample to show you guys what activewear is because everybody has been saying activewear is not that unique. You see, this is really fashionable. It's got some diamante thingies on it. You wouldn't find this in a sports store, but it does have performance elements. Everything that... Um, you know, sportswear would have. So Deviani, I'm going to stop you there. We're going to move on to weaknesses now. Eileen Wallace. Deviani, it's so tough when you're starting your own business to think about the downside and, and what are areas that you need to address? Where can you improve? What do you see as the weaknesses in your organization? Um, I think the biggest weakness is also one of our biggest pluses. You know, we're trying to create a new market segment. Uh, I'm constantly telling people the difference between active wear and sports wear. And maybe in, in markets such as Canada and the States and the UK, that distinction has already been made because the market is at a maturation rate. So the, the challenges that we're facing is educating people and getting people aware of what are the differences and what are the perks and the benefits of uh, active wear. And that's where I think our greatest challenge, but also our greatest opportunity lies. Well, Yusuf Takan, you have a question on opportunities. Definitely. I mean, <clears throat> Deviani, you know, you're, you're a dot-com business. You know, you're, you're, you're part of a growing internet you know, environment here within the region. What do you see the opportunities facing your business being and how do you plan to exploit them? I have some amazing niches that I'm trying to get into. You know, uh, I'll give you a sneak peek. Right now, we're at the final stages of negotiating um, an exclusive brand that is active wear for pregnant women. And we're looking at getting active wear and swimwear for women that have had uh, breast cancer surgeries and mastectomies. I'm speaking to some people to create uh, performance fabric abayas for all of the mums that walk around Safa Park, uh, you know, and uh, burkinis for uh, women who are more conservative <laughs> and would like to go swimming. You know, nobody's doing any of this stuff. It's a tremendous opportunity. So I'm, you know, it's awesome. And Edward, uh, a question on threats from you. Do you think the social uh, element of things here and the cultural element acts as a threat to this business? It's definitely something to consider. At the moment, I'm the buyer and the bottle washer and everything else, but 
eventually when we're huge and we have a buyer, one of the things that I'm very particular about is I always buy things in dancewear that are mainly cotton lycra to consider the climate. I always buy necklines that are higher and buy uh, designs that have patterns on the back, not so much at the front with no plunging necklines and things like that. And uh, in terms of uh, fabrics, there are other things to, to consider which are too technical to explain at the moment. But yes, there are some cultural uh, and environmental and weather things to consider, And uh, but I don't think that's a downfall. There's tons of variety out there to choose from. Deviani, okay, that's the SWAT report, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats. We're going to take five or six minutes now. Just going to throw it open to our judges' questions. Eileen Wallace. Deviani, I have a drawer, as many women in the UA do, probably full of active wear, exercise clothes. Why on earth do I need another option in the market? Okay, well, uh, the, the one thing that I think uh, is great about us is that it's fabulous. That's what we call it. But the different elements that separate us is we are using a new technology of fabric called Suplex. And although there's many performance fabrics out there, this particular one absorbs sweat away from your body but doesn't let it surface on the other side. So you could go to a really strenuous cardio class and then after that you could go uh, and have a coffee and then after that you could go to Spinney's and after that you can go pick up your child from the groceries and you won't look like a drag. So there's in the fabric itself, that's the specialty. And the other thing is in styling and size. Most women, world average size is a UK 14. And um, if you are, you'll have a hard time finding clothes that are bigger than UK 12 in traditional sports stores. But we cater to those needs as well. And finally, for women like me, I like to look nice. You know, when I go out to work out, I want to wear layers. I want colors. I want to look exciting. <laughs> so um, the fa- the activewear that I have is quite fashionable as well. There's a lot of designs at the back and, and, and stuff like that. Yusuf? Um, obviously, coming from a dot-com background, Deviani, I was very interested to see your digital presence and what you were doing there. And, yes. and I did a search online for activewear. I did a search online for sportswear. And I didn't see any search engine optimization bringing your results to the top of the page. I didn't see any search engine marketing, you know, driving my attention towards you. But I did see that you've made a good effort on Facebook. You have a thousand fans. You seem quite active and quite engaged. But, you know, are you driving enough traffic to your site at the moment? And what do you think you could be doing better? Yeah, um, actually, that's a really good point you bring up. Um, We just relaunched our website on December 6th, Mm -hmm. so the website is really new. Uh, We've just hired a company to do a lot of SEO for us, and from what I understand, it takes a little while to get there and to get going. And to help it out, we've just started a YouTube channel where you can see me showing a lot of products, (laughs) and we've also started a devianidayalblog.com where I can start uh, writing blogs with various uh, Google AdWords and things like that. We're also doing uh, Facebook advertising and Google advertising. So it's taking it some time, but I'm very much involved in the social media front, and, and, and I'm very passionate about it myself. So uh, I think you'll see some results shortly, <laughs> I hope. A <laughs> couple of final questions uh, to our judges. Edward. How is this trans- how's all this activity and energy you're putting into it translating into sales growth of the business? So if you looked at your month-on-month sales growth, how is that now developing? Well, if we looked at month-on-month sales, you know, there's like a 50, 60% increase, but that's because we're talking about smaller numbers and those are jumping up ahead, especially a, a lot of uh, credit given to this great radio show. So uh, it, there are increases, but uh, of course, I feel like I want more. There could be much more in terms of sales. And we're hoping that that happens as the website presence and online presence really increases. Deviani, what's the rest of your communication strategy? How are you going to get a buzz going, some word of mouth out there about your brand? Okay. Uh, We have a PR company that we've hired and we really want to give back to the community. So we've put up a lot of community drives in place that are going to be coming up. So with the PR company and hopefully with the radio, we will be doing a lot of events. I want to do some yoga events. I want to have some talk events where we call people who can talk about diabetes, which is a big deal here, who can talk about obesity related issues for women. So and how that affects us in terms of, uh, you know, reproduction. A lot of women who are my age are going through uh, polycystic ovaries because of being overweight. So I want to address a lot of those issues. Our PR company does releases every month. Um, You know, we take tons of pictures and send them out. We try to meet with editors. So there's a lot of buzz going on. Um, I think it's just we are at that moment of inertia where we're just about to burst, you know. Deviani, thank you very much indeed. 
Okay, Deviani's going to go and wait in the green room for a while now. Our next contestant, there are only two this evening. Our second finalist, Orit Mohammed of Boone Coffee, is going to join us in the studio in just a couple of moments' time. But we are going to hear a lot more from Deviani later on this evening. We will have a winner around about 6.30, 6.45 tonight.